I'm The Voice, and this is a Divi community produced video from the foundation. Episode number 14. Today I've got Rob and I've got Meeks. How are you guys doing? Good. Good to be back. Yeah, it's good, good as back. usual. It is good to be back. We had so we had a busy last uh, last few episodes. We had guests on. We had Jeff and we had Jake talking about Siege Worlds and all those projects they're working on. That was kind of fun. That's right. It's on the us today. <laughs> it's just us. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. It's just us. <laughs> no, it was nice. It was nice to hear about the, the progress on Siege Worlds and everything that's happening on, on Lightning Works. It's really, um, it's really nice. Jeff has been uh, pushing forward. He didn't really stop. And so yeah. it, it's I nice to say, see uh, that things are happening. After that episode, I went to go play. Uh, it was fun. I even so took my I. son on and he played and he, he gave it a thumbs up. So it was, uh, it was, uh, it was actually pretty fun. That's nice. I, I can't wait to see the evolution with the second dev. Um, it yeah. is really uh, interesting. I, I yeah. have to say, I stunk. I tried it. <laughs> I got overwhelmed by I don't know something coming at me. I was, I was, I was shooting things that I can attest. But yes, it, it definitely I died. can't be only you in there. You're gonna die. You, oh yeah, that was only me. Be, I was just yeah. by myself. So yeah, that, that's not gonna work out. It, it it definitely needs to be like five people there, and it definitely helps if if you've got you know a decent weapon. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> depends, right? If you have a million millennium sound or Gandalf here, they just one shot yeah. everything. So that's uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I saw I saw millennium sound when I was in there because they were going up and they were forging. I guess weapons at whatever that station was. I'm such a noob; I had no idea what anything was, and yeah. so, um, so yeah. Once I went out there, I was all by my lonesome, and yes, I got eaten up, eaten up. I, I just <laughs> threw a bunch of divvy in there, and I bought some better stuff. I, I, <laughs> no, nice. I probably should the have short done that. round. Think about that. Yeah, it is a grind game, right? So you you have yeah. to progress to make better weapons, and uh, that's how it works. Would yeah. you so, call it a grind game? Yeah, you're grinding, right? Like I, I don't know if I mean I'm I'm old now, so I don't know if you still call it like that, but well I'm so old I would call it fragging, right? So when you kill somebody, it's fragging like an old quake thing. So yeah, that's how old I am. Right, right. But as you're repeating the same thing in the same map with the same um like enemies, then you're kind of grinding your way up, right? You're amassing resources and then forging those um those weapons to get a better weapon to basically just build yourself up, right? And earn Divi. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Divi. That's, that's the coolest thing. You earn yeah. I mean, Divi. For now, I've spent Divi to, uh, <laughs> to get a good weapon, but that's how, Divi, it, that's how it starts. Yeah. <laughs> and you can oh, sell your weapons. So you can yeah, sell it's things. It's funny because I, I put money there. I bought, I bought some weapons. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I picked up Divi that was all over the place. And then since it's in Divi Go... Like I, I now have more divvy than than I started with. That's <laughs> so nice. Really, really. It's nice. Yeah. And it <laughs> directly puts it in the wallet and it directly yeah. sticks with it. No, it's a yeah. very, very smart thing. That's yeah. great. Wow, I learned something right there. I didn't realize it. I maybe I missed it in the last conversations. I didn't realize it would stake right away too. Yeah, 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 of course, because it's, it's in the go wallet. So yeah, that's a little awesome. bit every day. That's awesome. I'll and, play uh, it again. That's right. <laughs> okay, so we didn't right. plan to talk about Siege Wars, but just, no, we just came up. We did it. Yeah. It's my fault. But, uh, just a recap. Yeah, no, no, that's good. So yeah. we won't talk about news today. Uh, today is no. today. Uh, US elections are happening. So as the video is coming out next week, uh, probably everything we would say would be outdated by now. Um, so instead, we'll talk a little bit about DV um, and then uh, about how to start a project. Like we basically gathered a lot of experience with our relationship with the partner who is really um, moving its way forward. And we really wanted to share that and compare with how it is done in the industry. So um, let's so if you uh, want to start, start a crypto Divi. project, you want to listen to what Neeks is saying. Yeah, well, let's start with I mean. Divi News, right? <laughs> <I mean. laughs> so we're going to do news, but let's start with Divi News. <laughs> That's right. So we were able yeah. to evaluate uh, the time that we will need to the transfer or redeploy the votes under the foundation umbrella. And it will take a little bit of time. Technically, um, it shouldn't take us more than a couple months. So we're planning to have that uh, by the end of the year. But we also have to um, 
clarify some administrative things with the transfer from TV Labs. And so, yeah, we expect that to have that end of the year, uh, later early next year. So uh, that would be really great to have the votes back. We've had a lot of a lot of demand. Everybody is still asking. Um, I remind you that you can stake on your desktop wallet uh, for those who have a um, computer that they can keep on 24-7. Uh, this is still ongoing. This will never go away. Um, and then, yes, uh, the timeline is about end of the year. And you can also manual vault if you want to. There's tutorials for that. So that's, that's just no question. So you have the options if you want to do things the not crypto made easy way. Yeah, it's not all out the window. There's some there's some stuff we can do, uh, but I hopefully in a couple months we'll, we'll have it better. Um, and that's, oh, I think yeah. that's the key takeaway there. That's right. And um, yeah, and so we're live on Zegex. Um, yep. This exchange that is... Uh, extremely welcoming with their KYC policy. They're not um, being any, uh, rejecting anybody. They're very welcoming. And so basically, yeah, we've been live since, when was that? Last Tuesday, I think? Yeah, it was mm-hmm. last, I think it was last Tuesday we went live. Right? Uh, mm-hmm. Oh, so that would be two weeks ago in the video. Right? Was it two um, Yeah, it'll be two. Yeah, people in, right. the fu- in our future, that's in the two fu- weeks <laughs> and the Tuesday before that. <laughs> that's right. Exactly. Yeah. That's right. There'll be so, a new U.S. president and two weeks at Exegets. So. Right, <laughs> right. Potentially, uh, we hope. Um, yeah, potentially. So, <laughs> <laughs> so in uh, Zegex is not having so much traction yet. I mean, it's not like we were having a lot of uh, volume in the last few months. Uh, what happened um, definitely had a shock, and nobody is really comfortable with the current price. I think, or and and so. We'll see. I think things move up slowly when the uh, the, the activity move up slowly when uh, the market will kind of um, wake up. Maybe after the election, uh, that would be interesting to see. Uh, however, uh, Zegex offers really good options. Maybe I want to talk about the liquidity pool mechanism, voice. Yeah, they have liquidity pools. Um, so that is normally something that you would talk about when you participate in like a DeFi, like uh, if you participated in. On the Divi DeFi platform, of course, you could participate in liquidity pools. If you didn't, I, I didn't, but some of you did. Um, it's where you can actually place your crypto, two pairs of crypto, let's say um, USDT or Divi. And what ends up happening is, is that's used in the market. You set a price. And as those two pairs trade back and forth, you can earn in the fees on those trades, sort of like how a market maker makes its money in the market. And that's all possible in Zegex. Now, the cool thing is, is if you have crypto, have enough of that crypto, you can actually create other pairs too. So right now it's set up specifically with USDT and Divi, but if you wanted to pair it with something else, you can also do those kinds of things too. So yeah, you can put your Divi and USDT to use. That's that's the fun thing about their liquidity pool system. Yeah, that's really nice. So we created one uh, from. But it's not like Uniswap. It's a uh, it's a centralized liquidity. It pool. is a like centralized. They're, they're emulating yes, exactly. it. Yeah, I was using that as a. <laughs> that is right. That's a very loose. Yeah. <laughs> it is centralized. <laughs> that's right. And so yeah, it is. We started one with uh, DV and USDT, uh, right. and so everyone can contribute. Uh, it's basically one from the foundation and yeah, it's, it's intended to grow. Um, there is also, um, some market making that is active that Zegex offers so that they make sure that, uh, the liquidity is spread over the book order and, um, and yeah, go, go visit there. We also have the blog article and all the links there. So don't hesitate to go check that. Yeah, make sure you sign up for your account at Zegex. Uh, we'll just close that out. I'll just repeat what Neegs has said. It's it's a low or no KYC. They're very open for the communities. If you want to withdraw more than 5000 a day, that means you, you go to the exchange, you deposit whatever crypto, let's say in this case, uh, USDT or whatever you're going to trade. And then when you procure whatever crypto you're going to get, in, in, in our case, I would say Divi, if you're going to withdraw more than 5000 U.S. paired dollar value per day, you'll have to do a little bit higher level KYC. But for most people, that kind of covers everyone with just a basic 
email name kind of information. It's pretty pretty easy, pretty cool, and it's open key open for U.S. participation. Hey, well, one thing is we're saying the name, um, but to be clear, it's a palindrome and it's spelled X-E-G-G-E-X. And that's how, and it's pronounced Zegex. And so that you yeah. can find it now. Yeah, that's interesting because when I first heard about it, so I didn't hear about it. I actually read it, right? That's, I think that's Voice who told me about it or maybe it uh -huh. was uh, Richard at that time. Uh, from Box Wallet. And so I I was thinking about how it's pronounced and I was thinking XXX. And then voice, I think, yeah. had another pronunciation. So we, and we ended up being something we met, never imagined, which was <laughs> Zegex. <laughs> I think I, I think I teased and said kiss kiss kiss. <laughs> <laughs> it was something yeah, we're already over. bashing our new exchange. That's, yeah, that's yeah, not, they're, they're very friendly. New exchange. <laughs> <laughs> we were on this new exchange. Yeah. <laughs> but actually, it has a really nice interface. It works really fine. They have a um, mobile app in beta. I've heard it is definitely beta. It's not, it's not the best. However, it is reliable. It's just a little bit clunky. But, okay. but otherwise, yeah, it looks like a very interesting platform. And we already had good feedback. So try it out. Exactly. Cool. Well, that's right. big so you those to... are our big Divi newses. <laughs> Plural. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll let you get started then, Rob. Starting projects in crypto. That would that would sure. Be, uh, uh, so hopefully, I don't cut out a lot here. But yeah, we've learned a lot. Um, you know, our partners doing this kind of stuff, and it's uh, there's a lot of different phases and different parts. But let let's just kind of start at the beginning, and and we kind of mm -hmm. thinking about this in that. When Divi has side chains, you can use those side chains to be your business. And we've Correct. talked about many times about like how these side chains can be anything. And we've gone into different examples of what, what they could be and so forth. So you can definitely go back and I'm not gonna, we're not gonna rehash that now. But let's just say you can have a blockchain for yourself that your business participates or, or is built upon. Um, and so it's a crypto project. Um, or crypto can be underneath it, um, yeah. however you, you go. Um, so there's a lot of, there's kind of a, a, a long path from here to there. And uh, so let, you can start out with the beginning where you have, here's my idea. You don't have to implement anything uh, yet. You know, if you don't, if you yourself don't know how to do the programming or the, de or the deployment or anything like that, that's, that's okay. As mm. long as you want to do this idea. The beginning of the idea is you're going to have to fund some stuff, <laughs> right? So you're going to put it on a piece of paper, your idea. You're going to ask your friends, does this make sense to you? But then there's some kind of key critical steps that are in the beginning, right? You want to capture some stuff and you want to make sure what you're doing is okay. Um, and so let's start with the, is it okay? Um, yeah. And really, you're going to want to get some legal help here. Um, it's crypto. It's still scary in our, in our economy. Um, and our regulatory framework, um, there are some things that clearly you're allowed to do, and there's some things that you're not allowed to do. And I don't, we're not legal advisors, we're not financial advisors. And so I, I don't want to, for us to talk about what you can and can't do, because it may be not true state by state, may be true in America and not true somewhere else or vice versa. So really what you need to do is find a crypto lawyer a lawyer who is familiar in the crypto space, and there's dozens of them, um, and you know, throw that idea at him and ask that per or her, ask that person how to get from here to there. It's super important that you actually do this. And lots, historically, lots and lots of projects didn't, right? We're just gonna <laughs> YOLO! And, um, and yeah. uh, they end up getting in trouble or getting their users in trouble or people lose, lose funds or they spend funds on things they don't want to spend funds on like you know legal hassles later so it's critical to to you know get some advice in the beginning it's going to cost some money and i think it's really critical right because if you so if you don't uh, plan for that i mean lawyers are extremely expensive uh, it can go it can skyrocket very quickly and so it's very important that you think 
ahead because otherwise you will be tempted to do exactly like you just said, right? Like go YOLO because you don't you didn't plan for that and you still want to move forward. And the result is that you could end up stuck, right? Um, yeah. Some of the um, some of the information that we will share uh, today is learned uh, from the partner, but also from rebuilding DV, right? Like understanding yeah. where uh, DV needs to be strengthened and um, and also working hand in hand with the partner uh, in their journey too. So, yeah, really we, we, the three of us, are trying to bolster some stuff that needs to be sorted out in order for us to move forward. And it's not technical. So <laughs> there's other stuff happening that we don't talk about because it's insanely boring. Um, it but. is. <laughs> <laughs> so after that kind of stuff, you've got, you're feeling good about going forward. You've captured, you've talked to lawyers, you've captured some stuff that, that's probably going to be mostly out of your pocket. Um, yeah. And then, or, or, you know, maybe you get some help from family. We'll get to, we'll get to that kind of funding in, in a little bit, but then you're going to really want to be able to communicate your idea. And so like, especially to strangers, right? So Correct. your friends, you can kind of, you know, toss it back and forth and so forth. But at some point you need to put it in a form that people are used to seeing. And so th for us and for most crypto, when I say us, I mean our industry, basically we've got kind of three main ways we do that. And the first is the pitch deck. Um, and there's tons of resources out there for making pitch decks. There's websites for making pitch decks. There are templates. There's advice, blah, 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 blah. You're going to need a pitch deck. You're going to need uh, a one pager. Um, you are going to need a white paper. Um, and, you know, there's different qualities and it depends on how complicated your thing is. You, you, these are just standard forms of communication. The one thing I left out that you're also going to need, and it's super important, is you're going to need a one-liner. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you, you, so you're going to take your pitch deck and kind of convert it into one, maybe two sentences um, and be able to communicate your idea really quickly in a way that people will understand at least what you're on about. You don't, yeah. They don't have to, obviously, in one line, you can't do how uh, or whatever, but... Like, what is it you're attacking? Ooh, I'm interested in that thing. So that one-liner is what you're going to use for this, for networking, which we'll get to in a second. Um, so really, those four things are super important. Your pitch deck um, is going to suck. <laughs> like, no matter what, <laughs> you know, you're going to build one, and it's going to suck, and you're going to show it to your friends, and if they're your good friends, they're going to tell you it sucks. They're going to help you. Um, and, yeah, <laughs> and so... Uh, maybe your first five versions are going to suck um, yeah. and you're going to rely on your friends or, or if you've got people working with you, you want, you know, who are interested in doing your project with you, you're going to want to make sure that they're honest with you, right? Th these are people who are working with you and you want to make sure that these people are going to tell you that you're, you know, the thing that you make sucks. And if they're helping you with it, you're going to want to tell them that you hate the thing. Like, that kind of honesty, brutal honesty, is what makes it better faster. Um, and then finally, you know, after a while, uh, and maybe you got some more money in, again, fundraising later, um, you can actually afford to maybe get some help with some graphic design or, you know, just more professional reviews from advisors or whatever. But in the end, you need to get something down so you can communicate it to this first tier of people that you're going to be talking to. Um, that pitch really needs three things in it. First, it needs that hook. Um, like So again, like right out in front, what is it that, that your business or your idea is solving? You know, what is it that is taking the person in? Um, th this is actually often the hard thing for people like they've got this complicated idea and you need, need to understand it all at once in order to understand the idea you, you can't have that you got to have something you need to you need to be able to encompass it in a single hook a single page uh so that people want to go to the next page and it's very difficult I think relative for the people here even even when we talk about it since we're talking about how the partner is doing it how we're you no know, pun intended working with the partner mm -hmm. um i guess it's not really a pun 
But even with Divi, there is a one-liner. The, the one-liner for Divi was what? Crypto made easy. Crypto made easy. Crypto made yeah. easy. Exactly. I mean, so that's <laughs> that's simple. So that's those are the things that you have to be prepared for. But beyond crypto made easy, you need something a little bit bigger. And then beyond that, you have to have something a lot more that are the fundamentals of what you're going to do. And I think that's kind of what you're talking about. When we yep. get you move from the snippet, which is crypto made easy, which is a hook, right? It's it's you you, you got my attention. Then when I'm interested, you move into the further details. You better be prepared. And that white paper, which I think is is something you had just mentioned, and your friends and your family can be brutally honest. Yeah. <laughs> they will help so you with those guys. White of paper, I got to be honest with you. I don't think anybody reads it. Um, so yeah, I was I, I, I was going to. I'm not going to read that. Right. Hey, the hey, fact I, that you have a white paper is what's being acknowledged. True, so true. Don't expect anybody to actually read the white paper. You're going to put a ton of work in it. You're going to lay out your ideas. The details are going to go in there, and then no one's going to read that. <laughs> so, <laughs> and it's I not like most read, read the pitch deck either, right? Like in reality, yeah. um, it is like this is something that's important to understand is that investors are not looking into a breakthrough technology. I mean, if yeah. it's there, they're happy. They're looking into an investment opportunity. Right. Yep. And so um, they have hundreds, like they have many different investment opportunities. And for them, they just need to quickly see um, if it is interesting for them or not. And so yep. the they, way you they, build um, those documents has to be extremely uh, sought through so that yeah. you basically have each type of document for the type of people, like the type of audience that, that would read in, but also some kind of layer so that you can hook them with the title and then they will only after, if they really are interested, they will actually look at the details that are in your slide. And so all of that is, is extremely interesting to learn and to see how it works because it's not really something that we get to see as a user, right? That would be true. And just to, just to laugh about your comment about white papers, if most people read their white papers, either you're right, they wouldn't understand them, or the opposite would be is you would be able to discern that this thing is crap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Be the other. Uh, yeah. And, and so Nise is also right about the, about the pitch deck is those are skimmed through. Uh, Correct. They're not like, you know, you might present them um, to somebody, they're going to skim it. Um, and they're going to look quick things. They're going to look at the hook. They're going to kind of like read headlines that are at the title page, yeah. titles of, at the top of each page and kind of get the gist. They're going to look, they may, they're going to spend time on the team. I, I'm, you know, I'm told that a lot. Yeah. Um, and then the last thing is they're going to look at how they make money. Um, and so they, uh, you know, they, they're going to want to understand about you know how this makes them money, um, and it may yeah. not necessarily be a token. I mean, especially in America, if you're going to build a crypto business in America, um, you can certainly build crypto businesses that don't have tokens, and you sell shares like a normal business, and that that exists. Um, and so, you know, that's all up to you. There's again no advice here, um, but you definitely need to delineate directly to whoever's reading your pitch deck when they get to this page, you know, here's how you make money. Um, and so that's kind of, uh, <laughs> those three things are really, you're, you're going to have other pages cause you need to understand, you know, you, you do want to have pages that, you know, talk about how your, 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 your tech or your business is not a scam, you know, like, like there's some real thing there, but those three things, hook team and how they make money are really the things that they may not, uh, skim over as much as the yeah. other pages. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think this links with the next part, which is uh, basically about raising funds and the stages yeah. that you get into. Because you mentioned about that basically the pitch deck would be crap in the beginning. And then we talked about a few lessons already that you most likely will not know from the beginning, right? So that's kind of why we say it would yeah. be crap. And, and this is also what leads to uh, different phases for founding. Like you can't just go knock on the door of the big companies that are founding crypto right. because 
you would right. be too early in your stage. They yeah. will not be interested um, in working with you. Of course, if you already have like two successful projects that you build, it's probably another story because it is about networking. We'll talk about that in the next in the next part. But at the end of the day, it's really important to realize who can help you at which stage of your existence when you when you want to start a project. And it, and it is the same in parallel for DV, right? What can be acquired? What can be a win-win situation uh, for DV to move forward? And it's the same when you start, when you start a business uh, in crypto. You have to make sure that uh, the kind of investors that you want to look into, uh, yeah. you will not just waste their time because otherwise you would, We'll just keep hoping for something that will never happen. While there right. was actually a smaller investor that would have been meeting uh, your expectation and their expectation. So it's important to have a good idea of what you do. And for that, one of the most important thing is establishing a core network, right? Of yeah. people who Correct. really know what they're talking about, um, who are who have tremendous experience in, in the industry you want to start your business on. So here, obviously, crypto. And, and it is not an easy thing because you go in conventions, you, you try to meet people, and crypto, uh, like every new industry, has a lot of people that are not honest, right? And yeah. it's very difficult to filter people through. So you have to talk with people. And the best is obviously being introduced by one of the person that you know. So growing that core network that you have is really critical, right? And yeah, yeah. So I think that's, that's you yeah, know, we, we, we talk about it as a business. I think we can also interchange that with project. You know, you're going to start your project. It's very centralized in the beginning, right? To, to use that word because it's well, just it's you. you or it's, it's just a few people buddies, with an yeah. idea. And if you don't surround yourselves with people or legal, you know, for advice and those kinds of things to help point you in the right direction, which includes all the things like the one-liner, the pitch deck, somebody to guide you with that. When you're starting your project and it's a decentralized project in the future, even Satoshi, when he first got started, it was just him. Everything moment he put into it was his investment every computer he owned or bought for doing that work was his investment all the time he did in education or information and learning all the coding he did was his investment that's his one person that's as centralized as it gets today it's totally decentralized so there's always this beginning in a project where at first it's just you or the few. It's how mm -hmm. you get from that to establishing your core network and how you get from that to make sure you're you're surrounded by the right people that protect you from scammers. It's how you get from that so your friends and family, which we kind of lightly covered, gives you a little bit of funding so you can buy a brand new computer or afford a, a lawyer, or maybe that's on your credit card. Yeah. Now you move into your key advisors and investors. There's all sorts of things that go into that. Even if your project is for the future, a project of the people, I should say. So it's it's pretty crazy. Let's What's the next go section? Back can, and, yeah. and talk about the 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 stages of raising funds because I think that's yeah. kind of important. So so the first really is you're going to ask your friends and family for money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and, and there's two reasons for this. One is they know you. Uh, and if they give you money, it means they trust you. Uh, my personal rule about giving people money is I don't expect it back. Um, yeah. And it doesn't matter if, what it's for. Uh, if it comes back, great. So I'm not going to give somebody enough money where it hurts me if I don't get it back. Um, Correct. And so you do that with your friends and family. And uh, so the sec that's one reason you'll know who's you, you can hear who's actually you know, interested, well, A, who's your friend, <laughs> and B, uh, who, who of your friends uh, honestly believe in the, in the thing that you are trying to do. Uh, and the second thing is, at least in America, um, friends and family ha uh, have leniences that, that other investors don't have. Mm. Um, and so th that's one thing you can do. That, that's one helpful thing about friends and family, uh, putting money into your endeavor. Uh, the thing is, again, 
back to the lawyer thing, there's a number of ways that they can put money into your endeavor. Um, and so you have to make sure that you're, you've chosen a way that works for everybody. Um, you definitely don't want to come out of this, you know, where you've got previous friends being previous friends. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. And um, again, a very complicated environment, very yeah. important to look with the lawyer before acting, because it's very easy to kind of put yourself in one track where you're not able to move back to the other track. So important to do the things properly. Like voice, you were saying earlier um, that I was mentioning business and then you got back to project. And I think it is like there is a business aspect in most projects that Correct. is a little bit neglected uh, because it's often all about the idea, right? And then Correct. Um, the basics, the fundamentals of running um, a project, right? Uh, not necessarily for... A revenue uh, thing, but then still, you still have to manage a team, you have to manage their expectations, you have to, of course, manage the finances, and, and it is something that is um, often often neglected, I think, in crypto. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I, th I think you're right. I think that's, that's uh, you know, I've been on projects to where teams, and maybe Rob, you have too, but in the early days where teams were just like, we're going to build this, and then inevitably, somebody ends up footing the bill on let's say the servers where they're compiling the code and they're outputting hundreds of dollars and then they're expecting let's say some other person that's loosely connected to start building stuff and maybe they aren't connected well enough maybe they don't communicate well enough but it doesn't get built or it does get built um but then nobody else is sharing and everything and so it, it really depends upon how you lay out your expectations early on and how your how your team is beneficially rewarded all of those kinds of things whether they're loosely connected or directly connected in the project um yeah you need to have a plan i think is what it's coming down to the, is that the way it was described to me once was uh don't get into business relationships um without assuming that you're going to be divorced in the end um, so yeah, that's you, a good one. you, you want to go in with the presumption you're, you're going to be divorced at the end and be mad at each other. So everything that you do while you're friends with each other is protecting you during the times when you're not. And I think that's, again, you're going to need, need lawyer, lawyer help and you're actually have to talk to the people you're getting into a business with in order, and you're, and again, for the friends and family, have this discussion. What happens if things go bad? Yeah. Um, you may want to tell right. them like you, you, there is a chance you're going to get zero money back. I mean, that's, it's a reality. Who knows what happens? Uh, so the, that's a conversation to have with them to make sure that at the end of everything, everybody's still happy. So after friends and family, there's, there's a seed round, but there's often a pre-seed round. And here's where things get a little bit sketchy. Cause once you leave friends and family, you're now taking in money from, from, you know, presumably strangers or somebody you can't justify as a friend or a family. Whether you're in a seed round or pre-seed, that that is often often a little bit sketchy. You kind of can define these things your, yourself. This is pre-seed, and we're only raising X. And during yeah. your seed round, you're raising you know five X or ten X or something like that. Um, so it's kind of the pre-seed is often like, hey, this is enough money to get us kind of like looking like a business, like real branding, real, like, you know, real website, uh, maybe push the technology along if there's technology um, and that kind of stuff, stuff, push marketing along, you know, maybe community building starts here, maybe not. That's all depends on, on how things works out. So there's pre-seed usually try to, and you want that to be successful, a, a successful pre-seed round, let's say it's a hundred thousand dollars or $500,000. Mm -hmm. um, you want to use, you want to gauge your pre-seed, uh, understand like if it was successful. Why was this successful? You want to do everything you can to make sure it's successful and that it has a, you know, start and end date. And then you raise that funds and having a nice successful pre-seed of a small amount of money brings a lot of faith that a seed round is going to go well. So seed round is going to be more money. 
Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then right, you know, by the seed round, you're funding real business operations and so forth. And, and then after that, there's more rounds that are possible. They're often called series A, series B, things like that. Um, and you know, the details of each of them, again, we're, we're not advisors in any way. There's a thousand ways to do a different, different things. You might do something because it's crypto that's different than if it weren't. So the, I'm not going to get into any of that, but those are the general kind of like tranches of fundraising that that people do. I mean, you That's can right. try to do it in your garage. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> one one of the yeah. aspects that we can talk about, I don't think we had a note on it, but um, getting the first investors is is kind of the hardest, right? Because everybody is on the fence. Uh, yeah. They're all waiting for the other one to take the first step. Yeah. And so it is very difficult to um, breach that uh, barrier where, again, I think it's important to see that in, in crypto, a lot of, there's a lot of scam, right? There's a lot of people who are yeah. not even going to the extent of scam, but pretending things that are not really completely reality. And so it's very easy to lose money it's very easy to um, invest in the wrong project. I'm sure a ton of you already had the experience. Yeah. And um, yeah. so, yeah. for, <laughs> so for those everyone. investors, it, it is basically the same, right? They, they don't know, like if they don't know you, if they've not been introduced by somebody they know, uh, basically they will have their radar at maximum. Like I don't know this project and they will be extremely careful. But then... <laughs> Once you start to have names that are recognized, that looked into your project or um, looked into your ID and are supportive, then things start to go a lot better because now those serve as basically a guarantee or not a guarantee, but um, kind of a stamp that you've been verified and you're not among those probably 99.9% .9 of um, wrong wrong choice right that that they could yeah. make the way so, it was yeah. put to me was everybody all the investors they want to be second <laughs> nobody wants to be first <laughs> so, <laughs> uh and so it's very difficult to get the first and um right. so and then once you get the first all of a sudden somebody's gone in there and then you know it gets it gets easier from there so that Correct. that that makes a lot of sense so let's uh let's talk about like all right, so you, you you doing these phases? Ha, you know, you're you're wanting investment now. Um, the issue is nobody knows who the heck you are, um, yeah. and so, and you can certainly pay for marketing, but marketing is expensive. Um, we're, we're not really talking about day traders here. We're talking about somebody who's into your project for the for the duration of your project. You know, there, there's lots of these investors. There's a lot, you know, uh, A16Z, Sequoia. Sequoia, these are all, you know, the kind of people we're talking about here. But how do you meet them? You can, and some do, uh, you can just toss them a pitch deck and 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 spray and pray. Um, that is a method. You can find thousands of these uh, investment firms and just throw um, um, pitch decks at them. Uh, and some actually want it that way. There's a, there's, there's a number of them uh, that have an intake process uh, where you, you can do that. Uh, it's, it was recommended to me to not do that. It was recommended, uh, you know, that you get warm introductions for everything you want to do. So you go on your LinkedIn, uh, you network, you find places where people can see your face and where people can learn about you and trust mm -hmm. you um, and see that they have the same values as you. This is why the team becomes important. Um, and so what you do is, uh, so there are networking events all over the world, particularly in crypto, but every industry has these. Um, and so there are crypto events, dozens of them. There are bigger ones and smaller ones. Um, they all have the main event that has areas to meet people, meet other projects, uh, potentially meet investors, but mo in crypto at least, and I think there's, this is true for everything, there's also side events um, that investment houses put on or projects put on hoping to tr attract uh, investors. 
And, you know, it's, it's fun. There's music, there's, there's, uh, you know, drinks and food and basically a place where, you know, it's intended for people to network. And so you, you know, you can go to those kind of places and just talk. Everybody's interested, uh, you know, you, you kind of, <laughs> kind of got interested with a caveat, right? They're all interested in, 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 in finding ways to, to promote or improve their, you know, their project. Uh, and sometimes uh, that includes uh, finding partners, and sometimes that includes finding investors, and they are both in the same place. And so you're going around kind of meeting people and talking to them and, and hearing what they're doing, trying to understand if there's any connections. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there isn't. And also telling people about what you're doing. And it's very, very friendly. Everybody, you know, everybody's kind of in a, in a good place because you're in a safe place to do that sort of thing. Everybody's expecting the same thing. Um, and so that's really what it is. What, but you cannot go in there with an abstract version. Everybody wants to meet as many people as they can in these events. Um, and they don't want to wait for you to go through your you know, five pages of text to understand what you're doing. This is where that one-liner is super important. That's a hook. You got one or two sentences to bring somebody in and say, okay, so that they can say, okay, this is relevant to me, or this is I'm interested in investing in. You need to get it. It's it's critical that you have a good hook that get, that makes people interested in things. I'm solving this. We're fixing that. We're we're providing this. Um, whatever it is. And as I said, everybody's there and happy to talk about their stuff and try to find connections. That's what networking is: is literally finding connections. And everybody's there to do the same thing. The other thing is crypto is a little bit different than other um, industries. Uh, so other industries are like, you know, what's your LinkedIn? Um, in crypto, <laughs> it's, it's uh, scanning my telegram. And <laughs> almost everybody does the same thing. It's, you scan the, the telegram QR code, you take a picture of the two of you together, a little blurb there, and then that's, that's how you've recorded it. And then you kind of have to capture it that way because everybody's doing it the same way. Um, and then w w if you want to organize your, your connections, you kind of go, uh, go back and, and, ha and do that at night <laughs> or, or something like that. Um, but that's or have crazy. somebody help you with that. Yeah, right. Or have somebody help you. Yep. Yeah. And then the last thing. Oh, two more things on this. Um, scammers go to these events also. Um, oh, yeah. And, you know, there's not a lot you can do. You know, like you, you turn around, you kind of talk into the person. And then after a while, you realize that's not really a VC or that's not really a project or that, you know, like there are people there. Uh, it's not just on Telegram or Discord uh, where the scammers are. It's they're they're there in person. Um, yeah. And it's, you know, you don't want to be rude. You don't want to say you're a scammer or walk away, but you can definitely do your best at seeing that, you know, it's, the person's not a serious person and, 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 you know, be nice and walk away, but um, they are there without a doubt. Um, and then the last thing, which is kind of a fun observation to me is like, there's three kind of, uh, you know, it was mentioned that there's three kind of people who show up to these things. So one is uh, there's t-shirt and jeans kind of person. And the t-shirt is always the project always. And uh, they're, they're dressed down, but they're, they're not just bad. They're just, <laughs> dressed down. And then there are the suits. There's suits there. Um, and then there are the bros. Uh, bros. And it's very funny. And, you, you know, the bros come out at, like, at the parties. So often during the day, there's these events that are for networking. And then at night, there's parties. And usually the party can happen in the same place where the networking event was. And so you'll see this influx of people that, you know, they're they they are dressed in rapper clothes and have a lot of bling on them and and like like this different personality walks in all of a sudden it's very <laughs> interesting to look at so you mentioned like building the network and then uh, having oh, yeah. to talk with so many people to be able to uh, slowly build a network that is actually valuable of people who can orient them or connect them to the right to the right people or give them the right experience and and really one of the, the big thing um, is getting people that are key, right? Like people who really have an extreme knowledge are very well connected and, 
and it is really important to um, find people that will basically kind of introduce you in in that in that industry because yeah, otherwise that warm contact that's and right otherwise you you're yeah. basically always out and once you get introduced then the arms are opening people are listening to you a lot more and then you get access to things that you would never have had access to right services platforms i mean it is um it is everything relies on that in in crypto like in in many industries it is all about building that strong network um that mm -hmm. will and again like one thing that uh, crypto users tend to forget or um like a behavior that they tend to have is asking for things but you don't get those advisors because they're nice to you right you really need to build a situation that is also good for them right and it yeah. needs to be a win-win situation that's how you build relationship um it re it's really it will be interesting for you and it will be interesting for us so let's let's work together and all win in that situation yeah i think it's important to like you know if you're out networking or you're you're attracting advisors and you're attracting investors it's important that you really do find um people this, all, this is also true for, also true for hiring but but really that you want invest advisors investors workers that that share company values and, and like one company may have a certain set of values um and I don't just mean ethics. I mean, like well, the way they get want to get things done, uh, sure. the seriousness about certain things. And there may be, may be other companies that are like, hey, we're meme coins. Anything goes here. Like, like and so you'll get different people who who are interested in certain things. And it's your job, you know, as a as somebody who's starting a, a new project, it's your, your job to kind of filter that um, and as best you can so that you're working with people who are com very compatible and understand you know, your values and that they match theirs. Otherwise, the relationship's going to be bad. Um, or it's going to be good for them and bad for you and vice versa. And well, so you need to make sure you have a is good relationship. Yes, yeah, exactly. So win-win is what you're shooting for. Win-lose, somebody lost. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so um, you never want that. Lose-lose is obviously the worst. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, but so yeah. that's right. But so, identifying how you can uh, have a situation that is also beneficial for the people you want to work with is mm -hmm. critical, right? And and that's where um, we we're talking about the the phases, the found, founding phases earlier. That's really connected to that, right? Like you you need to find at the stage of your project, you need to find the good allies that will help you reach the next step. Right, Absolutely. it's very, it's really critical. Yeah, I mean, if I were to do it, I would, I would ask old bosses, I would ask, you know, uh, you know, who their friends are, if they have any investment people. Um, so you really want to get as much advice, especially if you've not done anything like this before. You want to get as much advice as you can, and who, no matter who you are, you've got connections and at least, um, at least uh, something, and. Your first round of connections or, you know, level of connections have more connections. And yeah. that's not even talking about investment. That's just getting advice. Just get advice. And you can talk to investors and just get advice. And later they might be interested. But really what you're looking for is to make connections and get advice so you don't screw this up and you yeah. really understand what, what they want with respect to exactly what you're doing. Again, it might be advice might be different for each thing. Um, so that's super important. Um, True. I and, think that's kind of it. Oh, and then there yeah. is the well, investor advisor, right? Like getting, yeah. I think we didn't touch on that point, but not all your investors will um, be involved in uh, the project that you're building. And it's fine. However, you want some investors that will make sure that they will put all their weight behind you and not just money, but they will make sure to connect you with all the resources they have, uh, the contact, the services to basically, you know, um, boost their chances that you, that their investment succeed. Right. Um, mm -hmm. 
it is uh, these can be key people because again like they have already invested in multiple projects like yours. Uh, they have had success and failures. They have connected with many people and, and they would be primarily invested in your project. And so they would have, you know, all the reasons for you to move forward, like for, to help you move forward. The win-win um, a, a relationship is immediately identified in that situation. And that's, um, yeah. that's really a key thing. Having people... That are not you're not just paying to advise you, but they are actually part of the of the project. Yeah, they have a vested interest is is very That's helpful. Right. Um, and then we can kind of like talk about like gaining advisors and so forth. So eventually you gotta you gotta hire people to to do this. Again, maybe you've got a small project, maybe you're you you are technically um, capable of doing the whole thing by yourself. So you know, if that's your project, that's awesome. But um, <laughs> most projects need to hire uh, not just technical, but, you know, marketing and community development and sure. uh, management. So, so there's, especially in crypto, a lot often you're asked, like, so what's your community like? Um, and so that's, uh, that you know, that it, it takes building all of that stuff. It's not just the tech. You know, people have to know your name. You know, if you want them to buy your your coin or whatever it is, um, yeah. or even just your service, forget a coin. You know, like yeah. buy it from you uh, instead of somebody else. Um, so you definitely need. There's a whole bunch of talent you need to hire, and it's not just technical, and it's hard um, because. Again, uh, again, there are a lot of people who promote themselves as capable and are good at promotion. <laughs> I think I think there's a good segue here into using other projects as examples. Mm -hmm. I think we've had a pretty transparent history over the last at least year and a half, two years on Ethereum and how Ethereum got started. And Ethereum had people that helped it out financially in the beginning, right before they launched Ethereum as a pretty open, decentralized project at this time. They had to produce a platform. They had to produce all these things. Did they do it as cleanly as they should have? I think is if you listen to the, I listen to audiobooks. If you listen to that book, the answer is no, because they didn't have it was difficult. That's all I'm going to say is you had a person with a, 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 a wild, crazy idea to do things with blockchain and new that nobody had really tried yet, who's young. And then you have these people surrounding this person and it, in it, some of the things worked out well. And I think surprisingly, um, Ethereum lasted because at some points in time, it could have it completely imploded. Yeah. So this is the wisdom that goes into how you would make a project like that, but it falls into that talent you're talking about. There are there are situations if you if you listen to books like that where they had talent that they thought was quality talent. They had teammates that they had put in positions that could oversee them and that there's there were mistakes made. Right, I yeah. think that's the you're talking about thing. the cryptonauts, right? That's the book. Yeah, cryptopians. Yeah, cryptopians. cryptopians. Yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah. not cryptonauts. It's a Laura Shin book. I read it too. It was yeah, it was fascinating. Um, it's a it's, great. The whole book. book is kind of like a fly on the wall for the whole kind of development of of Ethereum, and I highly recommend it. Um, even if I personally don't think the writing is that good, <laughs> but uh, but it's definitely the storyline in there is pretty fascinating to watch, and 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 it really is. You can see where group and personal interests conflict, and you can see Completely. like there's definitely very big personalities that are all involved. <laughs> and I, I think and it, that's another good example. Yeah, they're all involved, but even from that investor perspective, mm -hmm. some of the investors they had were malicious. Yeah. Yeah. And you so really have to back know to like you know making sure that everybody's aligned and and, and again so in, also in your talents so there's a lot of people Correct. who say you know with huge lists of, of programming capabilities and actually don't know how to program at all um like and when i say how to program i mean well <laughs> like, yeah yeah you know, that's and right and it, it, what's important to understand is that um there is no like blockchain is very recent Right, so there is no 
um, valid or established blockchain formation or training education that you can follow <laughs> and who would be like, hey, True. he's a blockchain engineer. It's not really like that yet. Um, there, have, <laughs> there are courses, but there is no really uh, established thing that you can no. really rely on. <laughs> and one of the things that is interesting is in all the blockchain industry, most of the devs are trained, they've trained on, you know, courses that you find on the internet. They're not engineer. Um, they've been like <laughs> doing websites or they were web developers and the demand for those kind of skill set is huge. Like everybody today needs, like every company today needs a website. Every company today needs their own app. And yeah. it makes that, um, it's pretty expensive and people who are not very capable are spreading everywhere because again, like the demand is so high that even if your offer is actually of a lower quality, you can still find a job. You can still basically thrive right in, a, yeah. in your career. And it makes the work for building a quality team extremely hard. And, on top of that, you, when trying to recruit people, you again face scammers oh. because the recruiting um, system is also plagued by scammers everywhere. If you try to oh, go so on a website wow, for recruiting yeah. or like it, it is really insane and they have really refined processes where they get hired and they actually don't work, but they still get paid or they work a little bit. It is, it is actually um, a very complex thing that again you have to take uh, very seriously um i think linked to the previous topic that we were talking about crypto yeah. uh, teams have a tendency to neglect or ignore those things which are clearly like purely business like managing a business right yeah and finding finding the right talent and keeping them because there is also a very competitive industry. Oh yeah. And if you don't know how to keep your employees, uh, keep them happy, uh, offering them tools and, you know, compensation that's going up, like all of that needs to be properly done. And again, planned in advance because those things can easily cost a lot of money. Like if you, yeah. if you're too focused on your ID and then you forget about the managing an actual project and leading into success, uh, you will end up probably out of founds and not with the yeah. right people. That's, that's basically how many, the fate of most projects. And we right? know this for how many times. Yeah. Yeah. yeah <laughs> how many times do. have we seen that it, 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 during, during our time in, let's say getting involved in communities, maybe buying coins, running nodes, and it's moved from that first stage to where it's has its investors, it has its launch, it's now open, it's now community run, it's an open source project, everybody's running the nodes. And there's devs that are rock stars. They're blockchain developers. And I mean that in the truest sense, not making a joke and I won't berate any of the people you just named in the previous you know, five minutes that call themselves blockchain developers, but we're talking about real blockchain developers and something goes wrong and that talent is removed. For whatever reason, you have talent that was awesome and they didn't keep that talent, the community, maybe the founders, um, they didn't keep it, they had good talent. And then that's detrimental for the whole project because now you're going backwards again. Now your project is stale. It's all about the right talent. It's all about the right investors. It's all about the right community. It's all about the right legal. It's all about protecting yourself from scams. But all of that comes down to the people actually doing the work. The idea was to go through um, the learnings and lessons that uh, we acquired working hand in hand with the partner and, yeah. and also looking into Divi um with the transfer and you know all our effort to to bring it forward and this is also a very important learning for us and for the partner because we also want to be able to uh, recommend that as uh, rob was talking earlier for any projects that would be coming on the on a side chain on a dv side chain any business that would want to be coming on a dv side chain 
understanding the print, like the basic things that you really have to cover if you want to start uh, your project on a crypto infrastructure, but also potentially also help other projects like DV, who would be like in a more difficult situation that we could connect to our side chains and yeah. then identify um, what are their shortcomings based on you know those learnings and and yeah we thought it would be a good idea to share it in a video. Yeah, the one yeah, thing yeah. the one thing I kind of want to I don't want to end up like we just went through all of this time talking about how to build a, a, a crypto project uh, or a legit one um, that you know it makes you safe. Uh, should be clear though that. Uh, this is really for everything we just described is really for big projects. Correct. Um, and there's nothing stopping you from, uh, when this is all ready from launching, you know, launching your own Divi side chain, providing some utility. If you don't have investors, if it's just you, you're, you know, there's, there's a lot, not a lot. To, it's like, if exactly. I'm trying to build a video game and compete with Blizzard Entertainment, I need investment. I need to do all this exactly. stuff. There's a ton of lawyers involved with that. But if I want to just like make my own game and release it on the Apple Store, there's not. You're fine. And, there's, and no, so, there's nothing. Yes. Again, there are some things that may be queasy to work with. So ultimately, you do want to get legal advice. Um, but again... If it's just you, you're not getting, you're not holding people's money in investment. You're not taking in money from investment. You are, you don't have a, a new coin. All of these things make it like you can still go ahead and launch a side chain, try some stuff out, see if people like it. There's there's nothing stopping you from doing all that. And if if it catches on, great. You know, make so a bigger I would thing say yeah, it. I would say it's a bit beyond that, right? Like it's you can start your test project or things that are at your level uh, without all that. But once yeah. you want to make it a project that is, you know, with several people and even more, if you want that project to end up being decentralized at some point, yeah. then you need to think about it early and then yeah. start with a lawyer. That's really I think that's important. True. Lawyer, yeah. and, and, and that's true for all businesses, right? Like that's if, right. if I'm doing that's something, right. if I'm selling tchotchkes out of my yard, not, you know, not a lot of risk there, but as soon as I'm doing international shipping and, and, you know, Correct. middlemen involved in the tchotchke selling and so forth. Now you've, you really need to make sure you've got business planning, legal advice, exactly. la, la, la. So it's now not how many, how many projects have launched a token and got into trouble? How many teams have number. gotten into trouble? Yeah, lots probably, of them, probably yeah. lots yeah. of them. Yeah. Um, it, it is the same as true as if you're going to build the next blockchain that's going to revolutionize the whole world. If you're building the next Bitcoin, the world is a little bit different today. If you have a whole team and somebody supporting it, even if you're going to give it away, essentially, to the world to use, you need to make sure that you you have your I's dotted and your T's crossed before you you give it away, essentially. Um, otherwise, exchanges won't even list you. Uh, that's yeah. the whole thing. There's that so too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, right, and, and that's in you. case of a token. But if you want to, you know, move around funds, if you want, like all of that is definitely something that is probably specific to your area, right? Specific to Correct. your country. Just go, go to you to a lawyer, and it, it is basically that's also why we try to put all that list. Is that when people are passionate or they have an idea, then they they do that test phase. But then after that, they keep moving forward, still in the test mindset. And that list that we went through is kind of a reminder that when you want to get serious, when you feel that that thing is going to be uh, large enough, you definitely need to do things properly like any other business, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. That would be true. Cool. That's good. Well, well, right, I so think so. we covered everything. Yeah, think, that was. Uh, I think we did. Let us know. Let us know how you like um, this. Ask how you questions. like this topic, uh, and if you want to have other topics like that. I mean, this really came up because we we are fully into it. But but otherwise, we were happy to investigate anything, and then we also build a lot of contact. So just let us know if you are interested Absolutely. in specific topics. All right, guys. Thanks so much for listening. Bye. 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 Yeah. <laughs>